Hey, it's Patsy. Welcome to the channel. I'm happy to have you here. Today is part two of talking about season five of Love is Blind. We're talking about episodes five through seven. If you're not caught up with the first four episodes, make sure to watch my last video where I did a recap of that. But I also just want to say thank you for all of the support. This is the best performing video I've had on my channel. So of course I had to make a part two for y'all. And thank you to everyone that's been subscribing. I'm even closer to hitting my goal of 500 subscribers. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. But enough talking. Let's get right into episode five. So where we left off on episode four is Uche coming into the pods, getting ready to propose to Aaliyah, but she left without even telling him. So he's talking with the producers and he just telling her like, I just need to talk to her in order to like get past to this. So they're like, okay, like we can call her and see if she answers. So um, they do that and she answers and they have a conversation over the phone. Aaliyah says that her last conversation with Lydia didn't really go well. Um, she doesn't go into specific details, but she just says that she got mad and she says, well, if Uche doesn't propose to me, then you can have him. And of course, Lydia got upset and she's like, well, fuck you. I don't want him. And I guess that was just too much for her. And she decided to leave without even telling Uche. Uche's upset. He's like, you really let some girl get in between the both of us, which first of all, Uche is not just some girl. It's your fucking ex. And she seems to have some problems. So I definitely understand Aaliyah for like feeling uncomfortable, but she definitely was in the wrong for just leaving and not even telling Uche. Since things have been going well with Lydia and Milton, it's safe to assume that they're going to get engaged. And if Aaliyah was planning to leave the pause engaged with Uche, I can understand why she would be uncomfortable possibly going to the, the honeymoon and the apartments and all that with Lydia there. I could see how that can be a bit too much, but she should have at least like wrote a letter, like wrote a note to tell Uche like, oh, this experiment is too much, but let's continue dating outside the pods, you know? But she didn't even do that. So while Uche is telling her like, I can't believe you let some girl like get in between us. She's like, did you really not know that when she saw you earlier in the year that she was looking through your, your email and saw that you applied to the show? Like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> He's like, are you serious? Are you really asking me that right now? Like, I can't even believe you, blah, 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 blah. She's like, I don't know how both of y'all are here. He's like, I don't know either. Like, I told you that. Like, I have no idea how we're both here. And, you know, they're both just super frustrated. He's like, I can't deal with this anymore. If you can't even, like, handle being in the same room as my ex, then you can't handle being married to me. And she's like, Uche, please, like, don't don't make me, like, make this decision right now. And then he pretty much just hangs up on her and says that he doesn't want to talk to her again. And that's where that scene ends. Again, I definitely don't blame Aaliyah for leaving if it was just all too much. But the way she handled it, obviously, was, like, super poor. So, yeah, seems like that's the end of their story for now. And immediately after that scene we cut to Milton and Lydia's reveal which is like you know what funnier fucking timing but anyway Lydia is just talking about how she's excited and she feels like Milton and her are falling in love Milton mentions how Lydia has everything that he needs and how excited he is to meet her but he does mention how he's feeling a little insecure about being 24 but anyway they meet to me, the reveal was a little bit awkward. I mean, I don't know. Of course, like meeting someone for the first time is going to be a little bit awkward, but they hug, they kiss, and then he like awkwardly reproposes to her. Like he had a hard time pulling out the ring or whatever. Of course, she thinks that's like so nerdy and cute. And he reproposes. She says yes. But to me, the vibes are just like still really awkward. To me, it seems like Lydia isn't like super attracted to Milton like I don't know if anyone can relate to this but maybe you met someone on like a first date and maybe you weren't as attracted to them as you thought you were going to be so you know you're not trying to make it awkward you're still trying to fill them out I feel like that was the vibe that Lydia was giving off and she was probably feeling a little unattracted because Milton was also saying that he felt like he looked 24 that day of the reveal so she probably was feeling a little turned off since he did look so young but after talking a little bit, she asks how tall he is because he is a lot taller than her. And the man is 6'7". That's even too tall for me and I'm 5'8". I don't know how tall Lydia is, but like, god damn. She's over there breaking her neck to kiss him. He got to break his back to go bend down to her. So that reason alone, I'd be like, sorry, chief, this ain't it. But they're both just like touching a lot. To me, it just seems like they're touching and kissing to fill the awkward silence. But they kiss a lot, they say I love you, and overall it's just given a big eh. So I don't have many hopes for them, but we'll see. The next scene, we're off to the honeymoon baby, and we have our three couples, JP and Taylor, Izzy and Stacy, and Milton and Lydia. 
they're going to be on their honeymoon for the next three days and then after their honeymoon they move back to texas they visit each other's families and then they live together for the next four weeks leading up to their wedding day once they get to mexico we see jp and taylor arrive to their room and there's just a whole ass guy playing the violins like okay i see you setting the vibe for jp and taylor but after walking around their their room a little bit they sit on the bed to chat and taylor brings up how she was feeling a little bit awkward at the reveal and she tells jp that she was so in her head about the situation that she ended up crying about it after the fact like after they met and jp's just like why and she was just like i i just felt so in my head about it like i felt like it was really awkward i didn't know how you were feeling and all that stuff but taylor says that she's feeling a little bit better now now that they're in mexico and all that stuff jp's like i'm glad you're feeling better and that seems to be where that conversation ends for now next we see izzy and stacy and they pretty much just talk about how they have the feels for one another Stacy says how she's never had a connection as strong as she feels with Izzy. And she says being with him in Mexico feels stronger than when they first met. So pretty much this clip is just them confessing how much they love each other and yada, 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 all that good stuff, I guess. Next, we see Milton and Lydia. They're sitting by the pool. And to me, it kind of still just feels like two flirty teenagers. Like it doesn't feel like a super serious or like deep connection with them like during this interaction we just see that they're just still being playful she's like examining his face making fun of like his small ears and shit they're just like cracking jokes back and forth overall the vibe seems pretty good and pretty surface level um we it's also pretty clear that they're like physically attracted to each other so i guess that's all they have going for them right now oh my god i've been recording for 10 minutes and i didn't put on my fucking lipstick one moment please all right there she is baby now we're back in business anyway we move back to jp and taylor and they're sitting by the pool and taylor brings up how she feels like the vibes are still pretty awkward she says it feels different than in the pods you know it feels a little bit more awkward in person and she just really harps on the fact that she's been thinking about how they're gonna have a wedding at the end of the four weeks and she's just like okay i just really have to make sure that i'm gonna be ready for marriage she mentions how she really doesn't want to get a divorce because of her parents and to me, JP doesn't really do anything to like ease her nerves. He just says like, oh, we just have to like keep moving forward because all we have is now, you know, just like kind of being like really lighthearted. Like to me, it doesn't really seem like he's, I don't know, really in it. Like he's kind of just sitting there and just like smiling the whole time, like I don't know, kind of just like, I hope I can tell you all the things you want to hear type thing. And it's clear by this point that Taylor is starting to have some doubts. It's the next day in Mexico, and we see the couples waking up together. Milton and Lydia and Stacy and Izzy both talk about how comfortable they were with their partner sleeping during the night, and we learned that they both hooked up. But we transition to JP and Taylor, and they wake up, and <laughs> of course the vibes still seem a little bit awkward. And they wake up to have the morning coffee, and they sit and chat a little bit, and they never mentioned that they hooked up so from this i guess we can assume that they haven't yet but yeah the vibes are still just like clearly very awkward and during taylor's interview she mentions how they talked the the day before about how things were awkward and jp was just kind of saying like well i don't like need to talk like you can just spark up conversation and obviously she's like well i can't be the only one like sparking up conversation for the rest of our lives like what i don't know that makes me think like has this guy ever been in like a serious relationship because again to me it just seems like he's like giving crumbs and being like here you go like this is enough and it's just like bruh like i don't know but taylor still seems to be trying nonetheless for their first full day in mexico we have the couples bonding on the beach they're having a good time drinking playing beach games all that fun stuff and then we see Izzy getting ready to talk to Lydia. He mentions that since he had feelings for her in the pods, he just wants to clear the air. And he did talk to Stacy about this beforehand. And pretty much he's just telling her that by the time that he cut off Lydia, he was only focused on Johnny and Stacy wasn't even in his head at that point. Lydia says that she was frustrated, not just because of him, but because of the overall situation. But she appreciates, you know, Izzy trying to clear the air. She reassures him that there's no feelings there and that she's in love with Milton and she knows how much he's feeling uh, Stacy. So they end up on good terms and it was a good chat. Moving on, we see the other couples chatting and we catch a glimpse of Milton and JP's conversation. Milton tells JP, oh, it looks like you've been getting some ass. And JP says, no. <laughs> and Milton says, oh, I wasn't expecting that. 
And then we cut to Stacy having a conversation with Taylor. Stacy tells Taylor how much she's into Izzy and how she just knows that he's the one, yada, yada, yada. And then she asks Taylor, and then she asks Taylor, you know, uh, what was it about JP that made you think that he was the one in the pods? Taylor says that in the pods, she felt really comfortable with JP, but now that they're in real life in person that she feels really uncomfortable around him and she feels like that she maybe made the wrong choice so she's starting to feel regretful about that and Stacy's just telling her you know if you really want this to work with JP you just got to step up we then see Taylor start to have a conversation with JP and she just tells him like you know I, I just I'm looking at the other couples and they all seem like they're having a good time they all seem so sure of each other and I just feel like we aren't where we need to be so you know pretty much she's comparing how their situations are going compared to the other two, which, you know, I see where she's coming from, but like, I think they usually have like four or five couples. So I think in the situation, there's going to be an anomaly. Like there's obviously going to be one couple that like runs into some issues. And I think she's kind of from like what we see, like every conversation they have, she's just bringing up how awkward it is. So I can understand for JP, how that can be really annoying if that's like all she's talking about, because from our perspective, it seems like that's all she's worried about. It seems like that's all she talks about. So I can see why that can be like a bit annoying. But at the same time, if Taylor feels like he's not doing anything, if nothing's changing, then yeah, she feels like she's gonna have to keep bringing it up, right? So overall, JP is saying that like, we'll worry about the future when the time comes, all we have is now, all we can do is like keep trying. Taylor is still kind of hesitant, but she's still trying for whatever reason. I don't know. But that's where episode five ends. Moving on to episode six. It's a new day in paradise, and we see the couples going on their next adventure, their next dates. We start off the episode with JP and Taylor. They go on a date riding an ATV. And at the end of their date, they have like a little picnic, and they agree that they had a nice time and whatever like that. But Taylor brings up once again how she feels like things are just still really awkward. JP says he wishes things were still the same, like how they were in the pods. He even says, sometimes I wish we could just have a wall between us so we can go back to the way things were, which is like, again, has this man ever had a real life girlfriend? And she even asks him that. She's like, you dated in the real world, right? He's like, yeah. So she's like, there's no excuse. Like, it's not like you only know dating in the pods. So... I don't understand why things are so awkward. JP says that he hopes that once they go to Houston, that things will just, you know, magically be better. I don't know how he thinks that's going to work if they can't even make things work in paradise, but okay, dude. He says, don't give up on me. And she says, I'll try not to. And that's where their their date ends. Next, we see Izzy and Stacy, and they're having a mini golf date. And pretty much they just talk about how much they like each other. Izzy says how he's never felt this way with anyone. And Stacy says how she feels comfortable with him physically emotionally and sexually and she just feels really connected with him and at this point they're looking like the only couple that has some real potential so we'll see how things go with them next we see Milton and Stacy and they're having a conversation over dinner and again their conversation is still really flirty lighthearted. they're just cracking jokes going back and forth and whatnot so really nothing major to cover with this conversation we move back to JP and Taylor and they're having a conversation before bed and JP asks Taylor how she's feeling about the day Taylor says that she doesn't think where there needs to be once again and JP says it's because she hasn't gotten past the awkward part and she says it's because things still feel really awkward to her. This starts kind of a dumb argument. JP says that it's Taylor's fault that she feels the way she feels and that in order for her to get past it, that she just needs to change the way he feels. I, I think to me, it's so obvious that Taylor is bringing up concern and she's like, hey, the, this is something that concerns me about JP, right? So it's nothing that Taylor can change about herself. I guess she can just be like content with not talking to the guy, but I don't understand how a relationship like that would work. Of course, this throws off Taylor a little bit and she says, well, whatever you're doing, it's not working. That's why I keep bringing it up. And she's like, I just really wanna know what changed after the pods. And JP starts to open up and tell her like, you know, when we first met, I understand that you probably wanted to look your best and you got all done up but I just felt like you were being really fake. And she's like, because I wanted to wear makeup. And he's like, well, yeah, you just showed up like really caked face and you had on like these big eyelashes. So I, I, I didn't know like if I was going to like be seeing this fake person every day because that's not what I want. Dude, 
Okay, so I, I guess he's just, like, never had, like, a serious relationship. Maybe he's only had, like, flings. Maybe he's only, like, had one-night stands. I don't fucking know. Maybe where he's from, girls don't wear makeup. But I find that very hard to believe. Taylor explains how she did her makeup because she just wanted to look and feel her best that day. And she doesn't understand how that makes her a fake person. But he's just pretty much saying, like, if you would have shown up, like, with your natural face, then, like, I would have loved that. There, w there wouldn't have been any awkward tension, which that's clearly a lie because he's seen her without makeup this whole fucking time and he's still not talking to her. And if the makeup was, like, also that big of an issue, you would have thought that he would would have brought it up by this point, right? Like... Ugh, I just really don't understand this guy. Long story short, they just continue arguing and he pretty much tells Taylor like, well, if you want to be with me, then you can't wear makeup. And she's like, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do, which rightfully so. What the fuck? Taylor just tells him like, I think we need to take some time apart um, for the rest of the night just to think things over. And she leaves to go sleep in another room. It's the next day and the couples are all packed up to go home and we see JP waiting in the lobby, getting ready to talk to Taylor. JP starts off by saying that it was partly his fault as to why things have been rocky ever since the reveal and that he still has a lot of hope for them. He says that he hopes that the love they have for each other can make up for the time they had in Mexico. And he asks Taylor how she's feeling at this point. And she just says how things feel really different from the pods versus in real life. And she just still thinks that they're not where they need to be. Um, she says she still has love for him and that she still cares about him and that she's never felt this way about anyone else. I think everyone has said that at this point. I think every couple has said that to their partner by this point, which like, that's big fucking cap. Like, I, I think they just be saying that. <laughs> But she tells JP that after their conversation from the night before, it just gave her, you know, the time to really look back and think about things. And she just says, you know, I feel really comfortable around you. So I don't think we should be engaged. So we should go our separate ways when we go back home. He seems sad. He says he wished they could have hashed things out. And she's like, you know, me too. I'm sorry, whatever. And she gives him back the ring and they hug it out and they leave. Honestly, this is what I like to see true healthy communication and being honest with yourself because she could have stayed right and like for tv to be on tv for content for her to get a bag and like try to make things work but no she said this is not what i want and i'm a peace out and this ladies and gentlemen is what irena should have did in season four so by this point the couples are back in houston and there's only two couples left Milton and Lydia and Izzy and Stacy. The couples are going back to their new apartments and Milton and Lydia mention how it's been pretty easy between them and they're just excited to get to live together. Milton then reads his email and sees that he's on night shifts and that he'll probably be leaving for work by the time that Lydia gets off of work and this seems to concern Lydia a little bit but Milton is able to calm her down and he tells her that it's a rotating shift and that he'll work nights four days a week, he'll be off three days and they'll be able to have time to like hang out and whatnot. So this seems to calm down Lydia a little bit and and that's how pretty much their interaction went. Moving on, we see Izzy and Stacy winding down. And she's talking about her family and how they've been pretty supportive of her during this process. She then opens up to Izzy about how she's nervous if Izzy might back out because of a comment that his mom said. She says something along the lines of like, are you sure? And she was just like, I want to know, like, why would your mom say that? And pretty much she was saying like, you know, since I haven't really felt this way about anyone else, she's never seen me be so sure about anything. So that was just her way of saying like, you know, this is a marriage, so you can't back, back out. And, you know, he was able to calm down Stacy and tell her like, I love you, girl. I'm in this for life. So yeah, that's how their conversation ends and Stacy feels a little bit relieved. It's the next day and the couples are visiting each other's places. We start off with Milton and Lydia and they're going to visit Milton's place. As they're chatting, Milton roommates comes in and they meet and start to hit it off. His roommate starts hyping up Milton and saying he graduated high school, he was already working towards his associate's degree and how he got his bachelor's and his master's and already making six figures right after college and how Milton is just really ready for a marriage and how much he thinks Lydia will compliment him. Milton's roommate then speaks highly of Lydia and he says how much he thinks she'll be a good influence on Milton. And of course, this touches Lydia. She's impressed, whatever. And this interaction ends off on a good note. Next, we see Izzy going to visit Stacy's house. It seems pretty nice. It's a three-story house. It seems pretty decorated. And she has all these plans for renovations and the idea of doing that together really starts to excite Izzy. 
After showing Izzy the house, uh, Stacy sits down Izzy so that they can have a conversation about finances. And she mentions how savings, investment, 401k, all that stuff is really important to her, especially because she owns a house. She talks about how eventually she's going to have to replace the HVAC unit and how she has two and each could go for 10 to 20 grand a pop. So she's like, do you just have 20 grand in cash to like fork over if I need a new HVAC system? And he's like, yeah, like I- I'm going to be here to help you. Like we can split the bills 50 50. And she asks him, OK, so what about dinner? He says, mm, I guess that just depends. She's like, no. He's like, what do you mean? She's like. The man pays for dinner and he's just like, oh, so you just want a man to like buy you everything. And pretty much she just talks about how since she's worked so hard for everything that she has in her life, she just feels like something should be, I guess, granted to her. So if she's in a relationship for a man, she just expects him to pay for all of her dinners and stuff. So she says how she's never had a man ask her to split dinner. All she's ever known is that the man pays. And she starts to bring up how her lifestyle is a little bit more bougie. She tells Izzy that if she's going to be taking vacations, that they're going to be like fancy vacations. She likes to eat nice food and things like that. So she wants to know that like if her partner is going to be joining in that lifestyle, that he's going to be able to cover some things for her and whatever. Overall, she's just saying that she wants to see a man take more like financial responsibility. And Izzy's like, I'm your guy. Yep, I'll do that for you. Just being like a yes man. So... That's where things end with them. And as we end episode six, we see Aaliyah sitting at a restaurant, of course, getting ready to talk to Uche. As he walks in, things seem a bit tense because this is essentially their reveal. He didn't even get to propose to her and this is their first time meeting. So, of course, they don't hug or anything like that. He just kind of sits down and is like, hey, how are you? Aaliyah then starts to tell him how much she regrets just leaving him and how she still loves him and things like that. And that's where the episode ends, of course, on a cliffhanger. And that brings us to episode seven. So after Aaliyah had a moment to tell her how she feels about Uche, Uche tells Aaliyah that her just up and leaving him just completely broke him. He says that he had no idea that she was having doubts. She says that she started having doubts after she talked to Lydia And she was afraid to mention this to Uche because of the way that he reacted when she told him that he cheated in the past. Uche agrees that he should have just been upfront about everything and it should have came from Uche rather than Lydia. And so he just starts to open up about the type of partner that Lydia was. He says that Lydia did some things to them. He says how Lydia did some things to him the first time that they were dating. So that's why he cut her off. But then she came back and she seemed really regretful, so he wanted to give her another chance. But after some time, he started to get messages from his friends and they were screenshots of Lydia's Instagram page and they asked him, do you know this girl? He's like, yeah, that's my ex, Lydia. And and these girls would just tell him like, oh, well, she's been watching my Instagram stories for like the past few weeks now. He then tells Aaliyah how one time she drove past Uche's place, sent him a picture of his driveway and said, I see you. Oh, girl, Mm -mm, girl. Of course, these were all major red flags and she was giving off major stalker vibes. So he just cut her off and didn't even talk to her after that. But of course, he started to feel bad and reached out back to her and just pretty much was her support system until he felt like she was stable enough to like be on her own. And then once he felt like she had enough support, that's when he cut things off with her again. Aaliyah says that she understands, but... Her major concern was that Uche was like still caring for Lydia because he brought up like how she was feeling about Milton and he told Aaliyah that Milton wasn't like ready for marriage, I guess. So this made Aaliyah feel like Uche still had some feelings for Lydia. She also says that one of the girls in the pods told her that Lydia said that she had a feeling that Uche was going to be there. And so this made Aaliyah suspect that maybe they both planned to be on the show together. (laughs) I don't know. And Uche's like, how the fuck was that going to happen? Because we're just going to act like we haven't met. We're just going to act like we haven't met each other's friends and all this shit. Leah admits, she's like, okay, yeah, that was pretty dumb. But then she's like, one of my last conversations was like the final straw. And she tells him that her last conversation with Lydia was the final straw. And that was the conversation when she was like, oh, if Uche doesn't propose, well, you can have him, whatever. And that pretty much prompted prompted her to just up and leave and she regrets that and she still loves Uche and whatever. Uche says that he still loves Aaliyah but he has his doubts understandably so 
And he says that in his mind, Aaliyah feels like the experiment and their relationship are two separate things. So she thought once she left that they would still date, that their relationship hadn't ended, which I don't know how the fuck she thought that was going to happen if she, one, she left with no communication. And two, Uche says that after she left that she just blocked him on everything. So how the fuck were they still supposed to date if, what? She just up and disappeared, so... Yeah, I understand why Uche still has his doubts and stuff like that. And long story short, he just tells her because of that, they can't be together. And he's like, I understand and tries not to cry, whatever. And that's the end of their story, I suppose. I'm glad that Uche was like, mm, nah, this is going to work out because I agree her leaving. That's just like such a big turn off. I don't blame her for leaving. I blame her for not saying anything because if she really did want to try things with Uche, she would have at least like wrote a letter or something and had the producers like give it to him, you know, just being like, this experiment is too much. I understand if she didn't want to live with Lydia, like in the same apartment complex and all that shit. But I don't understand how she expected Uche to still be there for her or Uche to still want a relationship or whatever. After this, we move on to Izzy and Stacy and they're going to visit Izzy's apartment which seems to be pretty okay. Um, it's not like super dirty or whatever. It actually looks pretty all right. There's some decor. Um, Izzy calls this place like a Hobby Lobby apartment. <laughs> and they go to Izzy's room. Stacy brings up that he doesn't have a nightstand. And she's like, oh, furniture's important. Like, it would be nice to have a place to like put down my earrings and shit like that. He's like, I've never had any complaints. I actually have a lost and found drawer. And she's like, what the fuck, lost and found? And so he shows her, he has this drawer full of like loose earrings, bobby pins, random jewelry of like girls that have saved the night. And she's like, wait, like, why do you have this? He's like, oh, just like, just in case. And she's like, so do you know like who this is? He's like, no, I don't. So she's like, why do you still have it? Which I agree. Why does he have it? I don't know. Maybe it's for like memory's sake, but like he's also in engaged now. So I don't know. I, I thought that was kind of weird. But then they move on to his kitchen. She looks through his cabinets and sees that he has red solo cups and plastic dishes and whatnot. And she's like, you don't have any glass? He's like, no, I just use plastic. And this really baffles Stacy. She's talking about, oh, so if you made me dinner, you would serve it to me on this plastic plate? He's like, yeah. She's like, oh, then I would just bring over like my own silverware, my own dishes. Like, okay. All right, you do that then. You can make your own meal because what the fuck? She clearly has never heard of the struggle or just doesn't understand why somebody would want to use plastic plates. Like, it's not even just like a status thing. Like, people probably just don't want to do dishes. Like, he probably just didn't want to do dishes and use plastic stuff for like convenience. And while they're in the kitchen, Stacy brings up his lost and found drawer. And she's just like, why do you still have that? Like, I, I just don't get it. And pretty much he was saying that when he went to his apartment the night before, he realized that he still had his lost and found drawer. He's like, oh, I should keep this to like show Stacy. And she's like, so you just wanted to like pretty much show me that like you're a fuck boy and all this stuff. And this makes her question if he's really ready for commitment because Izzy is just really like standing his ground. He's like, this is me, baby. This is my past. Like, I'm not going to hold anything back from you. He then brings up how the silverware comment kind of made him feel a little uncomfortable because he felt like Stacy was being materialistic. Stacy kind of deflects this and she says like, oh, I was just like pointing out that you use plastic stuff. Like, I wasn't being materialistic. And he's like, well, that's how it made me feel. And then he starts explaining, you know, a little bit more. And she kind of cuts him off and she's like, and he's like, can you just like stop cutting me off? And then she just walks away to go sit in the backyard. She sucks, in my opinion. Like, so Izzy meets her out in the backyard and she's just crying, saying she wants to go home. And he sits and cuddles her. And he's like, we're going to get through this. I'm here for you. I I'm not leaving. I know you want me to, but we're going to fight. <laughs> and that's pretty much how that scene ends. Next, we see Milton and Lydia, and they're meeting Lydia's mom and brother. And I just feel like their interactions are really nothing worthwhile, so I'm gonna speed by this as well. He's been telling her family how much he's been enjoying their time together, and he feels like they just really balance each other out. They talk about how they want kids and how they'll be raised bilingual and things like that. And pretty much, they just talk about how their relationship is pretty playful. 
and her mom and her brother seem to really like Milton, which is good for them, I guess. Next up to meet the parents is Izzy. He's meeting Stacy's family, and her family is really excited to meet Izzy. They gush over her ring, and they begin to chat. Izzy then asks uh, Stacy's dad how it was to raise three girls, and he talks about how one time they took a family trip to France for two weeks and how they packed two suitcases only full of shoes. And of course, they're just like joking around like, oh my God, we were in France. It was a family trip to France and whatever. And this conversation just kind of really highlights how they have money. They go to the couch to chat and to learn more about Izzy. And Stacy brings up how he just got his passport. He says how he's never really had money to travel, but his new job allows him to do that. And he's excited and he's ready to go anywhere and everywhere. Her sister mentions how important it is to Stacy to travel, how much she likes to do like fancy things and stuff. And she's like, I know you said how you weren't really able to financially like travel. So I just want to make sure that like you're going to be able to support Stacy with like, you know, her ready to travel and stuff. He explains how he just transitioned to insurance sales and how this will allow him to have a better life work balance and how there's just a lot more opportunity to make more money as well they start to talk about izzy's place and stacy brings up how izzy uses plastic uh, dishes and whatnot and of course this takes the family by surprise stacy says something like oh like i just wanted him to know that like if he cooks me a meal does he really expect me to like be impressed by eating off of like a paper plate or something like that and his sister's like agreed like oh my god i can't that 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 shit just really took me out but they're open to the family about their disagreement about the day before and how they work things out and yada 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 and then shortly after stacy's dad pulls izzy aside to have a conversation outside he starts off the conversation by saying you know how stacy is you know she really likes to travel she likes fancier things so he pretty much just asks izzy what his five to ten year plan is and izzy talks about how you know his new job will allow him to just make more money how how much work you put into it will you know accumulate how much money you have yada 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 he just really reassures stacy's dad that he'll be there to support her whether it's financially emotionally all these things and their conversation ends off in a pretty good spot so after this we have a pause reunion baby we're here to our party we're here to drink we're here to mingle and perhaps get a little bit messy we see some of the cast members walking in and they show us johnny walking in of course and of course things are a little bit awkward because you know stacy and johnny had a past with izzy and they show us uh like an interview clip of stacy talking about how in the pods when johnny discovered that um izzy like had more feelings for stacy that she pretty much just started shit talking stacy so because of that she's like fuck johnny after johnny walks in chris walks in and she tells everyone like oh like we're dating we're officially boyfriend and girlfriend so apparently they met at the airport like from leaving the show and they just hit it off the rest is history <laughs> So now they're together or whatever. After a bit of mingling, Izzy pulls uh, Johnny aside to have a chat. And he pretty much tells her, like, I'm glad I picked Stacy because I heard some sketchy shit about you. He then explains how he and Chris had a conversation in the pods, which exposed how Johnny was contradicting herself. They start to argue mainly because, in my opinion, Johnny isn't really taking accountability for, you know, her pretty much lying to both of them and she says that she's making up for it by trying to prove to chris that like oh i do love you even though you were you were my number two by the end of their conversation izzy's like i just want to give you some advice and she's like i don't need your fucking advice dude he's like no i, I just want to give you some advice because you know i'm just really glad that you know i didn't end up with you because i just really heard some sketchy things about you and everyone thinks you're sketchy of course this makes stacy frustrated and she's like you don't know me you're the sketchy one and she just gets up and leaves and of course she goes to find chris so she can go cry about it while johnny is talking to uh chris izzy then goes to stacy to pull her aside he's pretty much just like he tells her, um, you know, how their conversation went, and he's kind of being petty about it, just saying how he brought up how he thinks Johnny's sketchy. Stacy's just pretty much like, okay, well, I don't give a fuck. And Izzy's just kind of like, you know, I'm just so glad I have you because, like, looking at this and pretty much just, like, comparing them, it seems like. And Stacy's like, fuck that. Like, you're not going to be comparing me. Like, don't go to that, like, mess and be like, oh, I'm so glad I have you because we're not in that mess, you know, which I understand where Stacy's coming from, but yeah, Izzy just kind of dug himself a hole there because I don't know why the fuck he thought he needed to, like, check in with Stacy after that, 
But yeah, that's pretty much how their conversation ends. So some time has passed and we still have one more cast member to arrive. It's Uche, baby. The party's here. Now the party's getting started. Oh yeah, baby. And then of course he asks Lydia for a chat. He tells Lydia how he knows that she's a caring person and he starts telling her about all the things that he cherished about her during their relationship. But then he starts to talk about one of the first arguments they had and he talks about how Lydia wasn't truthful during that time and Lydia's just kind of giving him pushback like well you were also lying whatever whatever and they start to get to bickering and Uje's just like okay I brought this up I didn't want to like start an argument or whatever I'm just trying to talk to you. Uje starts to explain that during this specific argument he's talking about that Lydia went through his things and of course <laughs> Lydia denies doing that. She starts to get frustrated and she starts to like get up to like walk away and leave the conversation and then we cut to the girls chilling in the living room and one of the girls is like hey Milton like where you been and he's like I can't use the bathroom and she's like well your girl is in there talking to Uche and they're arguing so fucking petty so fucking stupid and then of course Milton being the 24 year old he is barges in in their conversation he's like what's up buds of course Uche is like um do you mind if we finish this conversation alone and Milton's like you can but we have plans in the next 10 minutes so wrap it up buddy like pretty much those are the vibes and he's like mm, okay Milton leaves and he just tells her like look I didn't really appreciate how you know you were lying to me and how these girls were telling me that you were like watching their Instagram stories and how you came and took a picture of my driveway and all this stuff and Lydia is just clueless the whole time she doesn't know what the fuck is going on she's like what I, I don't know what you're talking about I, I don't know Instagram's algorithm now girl I know those actions or accusations do not reflect the best of your character but it's okay all you had to do was own up to your mistakes even if it was just three months ago own up to your mistakes girl she then tries to throw it back in his face and to be like well do you really want me to say what happens and she's just like Uche really knows what happens, but he's not going to say the whole truth. And apparently he cheated on her while they were together. And she's like, he has some nerve for judging Aaliyah when he cheated, when he just cheated on me three months ago, blah, 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 blah. She gets super frustrated, just gets up and she just starts yelling at him and walks away. And she's just like, you're never going to see my fucking face again. And just saying how arrogant he is. And Uche is kind of being petty. He's like, well, I wasn't the one watching other people's Instagram stories and things like that. And <laughs> that's how their combo ends she walks away of course she's yelling for Milton and she's just like fuck this Uche then pulls Milton aside for a chat and that is where episode seven ends Woo, ciao there's too much going on in this season when they said season five was like the most drama packed I didn't think they were being honest honestly <laughs> There's a lot going on. And it's also like so remarkable that there's only going to be two couples going to the weddings. Like what? I don't know. Again, by this point, I have no hope for Milton and Lydia. And I have like, I don't know, maybe 10% hope for Izzy and Stacey. But that is where I'll leave things for here. I, I want to know, what did you guys think about these three episodes? What do you guys think of Lydia and Uche's whole situation? I know that's a whole shit show. I was talking to one of my friends about it and we had a whole long conversation about how she's a stalker and shit. So I would love to know your thoughts. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Again, I'm really trying to reach my next goal of 500 subscribers. So I would appreciate it if you could help me. But that is all for today's video. I'll check in with you guys once the next two episode comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.